Okay, welcome everybody to today's live webinar. We are talking about Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides today. So before I introduce our, uh, our host, no, I'm the host, our presenter for today, Susan Winkler, our technology librarian, uh, I'd like to go over some things on Zoom and then we will jump right in. So if you're, um, I guess I should introduce myself as well. My name is Rebecca Mandusen. I am a library associate here at the Champaign Public Library. Um, I uh, work with Susan on doing the webinars and also in-person programming, which is coming soon. Yay. Um, but yeah, you may have seen me teaching classes before. I also help at the information desk and you've probably seen me around the library if you're around. Um, okay, so for Zoom, if you move your mouse near the bottom of your Zoom screen, you should see some icons there. So some of the two main icons for asking questions are the chat bubble and the raise hand button. So the chat bubble will allow you to open up the chat window and type in there. So if you have questions, you can put those in there. Um, while Susan's teaching and demonstrating, I'll be in the background helping to answer questions and posing questions to Susan so that she can demonstrate or show something again. And the main thing is don't be afraid to ask those questions. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you get those questions answered. So at any time, feel free to put something in the chat um, we also have that raise hand button for asking questions as well. So if you would like to use your microphone to speak your question out loud, then I would say go ahead and use that raise hand button. That sometimes is easier to just kind of speak it rather than typing a whole bunch of, you know, like it, maybe for me, it's easier to verbalize something than it is to type it. Um, so maybe the same for you. So use that raise hand if you have a question that way. Um, and then there are also transcripts that we have going. So as you see us talking, there may be subtitles going at the bottom of our screen. Uh, if you don't wanna see those, you can toggle those on or off by clicking on the CC button at the bottom there as well. Um, and I think that's pretty much everything with Zoom. And of course, if you have any Zoom questions, please put those in the chat as well. But I will go ahead and pass things over to Susan so we can get started today. Hi, Susan. Hi, Rebecca, how are you today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing well also. Yes. Um, I do want to remind everyone, too, that we also uh, we do send out a follow up email. Um, and in that follow up email, we do include a link to today's uh, recording. So we are recording today's webinar and we will put that up on our YouTube channel. And uh, that way you can go back uh, after today's webinar. If you want to, you can go back and you can pause it. Um, as you're uh, working through different things that we do today in class, if you want, you can have the YouTube video up on one side and and um, practice on the other. And then uh, if we have any questions that require more explanation or further research, we will also include those in that email, um, as well as a, a little uh, feedback form um, that you can fill out to let us know what other classes you'd like to see us teach and um, how you thought today went. Uh, so. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started here for today's workshop, which is uh, Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides. Um, and I'm going to start with our handout for today, and then Rebecca's going to put the link to the handout in the chat. Uh, you can click on that to get right into the handout if you want. If you'd like to follow along today with the handout, uh, you can also print that out if you want. Or you can ask for a printed copy from us and we can have a printed copy ready for you that you could pick up here in the library. All righty. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So I'm hoping everybody can see intro to Google Docs, Sheets and Slides. I'm going to go ahead and start from the beginning here. Yep, we can see that first slide. Perfect. OK, so what we're going to cover today we're going to talk about Google tools um, because we used to call this class uh, uh, intro to Google tools and then we picked docs sheets and slides which is part of the Google tools. Uh, it is now known also as Google workspace so we'll talk a little bit about the difference between those two terms and we're going to talk about using uh, Google Drive because uh, that is one way that you can get to these tools uh, and in fact I think it's actually an easier way to get to them. Uh, but you can also directly get into each of these tools. Uh, you do need to have a Google account to uh, use Docs, Sheets, and Slides and the other things we're going to cover today. Uh, if you don't have a Google account yet, that's okay. You're welcome to join us and follow along and absorb um, everything and just 
uh, watch the demo of stuff before you decide whether or not you want to get a Google account, that's totally okay. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about template galleries. Google does have some built-in templates, just like um, if you're using Microsoft products like Word, Sheet, uh, Word, <laughs> um, Excel, or PowerPoint, um, there are template galleries in there as well. So you can do things like start with a already built out budget um, where you just put in your numbers uh, or like a resume template, things like that. Uh, we'll spend a little time in Google Docs, a little time in Google Sheets, a little time in Google Slides, and then we'll talk about downloading and the different formats that you can download um, your different files that you've created, your different documents and spreadsheets and presentations. And then we'll talk a little bit about permissions and collaborations. And one of the nice things about Google, uh, these Google products that other companies have caught on to and are now doing as well, is that you can actually collaborate with someone else live in real time. Uh, so if you had to do a presentation, say, for, for work purposes, um, and you had to work with some coworkers, you can actually all get into the same document at the same time and collaborate and build out um, a presentation or build out a report that you're going to show. Um, and everything like that can be done live. So it's really nice because then um, you don't all have to be in the same meeting room which as we know in the last two years has become even more important to be able to collaborate over long distances and not be in the same place as someone else. All righty. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, are there any questions before I start talking about Google Tools and Google Workspace? So someone <clears throat> did have a question before that I, um, I should kind of mention, we are going to cover. Sure. Someone asked, um, can you show me how to move a file saved to Google Drive to my documents directory? And I said, yes, we're going to probably cover that during the downloads portion of the webinar. Is that right? Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. We sure can. OK, I just wanted to make sure that we were covering that. Yes. Yeah, we will. We will. Um, we will demonstrate how to download something from uh, the cloud based Google uh, Drive or basically Google Docs. We'll take a Google Doc. We'll download it and then we'll open it in Microsoft Word. Um, and I'll show you where it where it lands, basically, um, when you download it. OK, cool. So, yeah. That was yeah, just, it for, for that so far. <laughs> yeah, so we should we will cover that when we get to downloads. Just remind me if I don't if I don't actually take it into Word, remind me. <laughs> OK, I think maybe so, they just want to save should. the file and not necessarily oh, sure. open okay. it in Word. But mm -hmm. I think, yeah, just to save it into their like uh, file explorer or. Oh, sure. Yes. File. Yeah, we will. Yep. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about where they go when they download and then how to move them from there. Sure. OK, cool. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Thanks. Great question. OK, so Google Tools. Um, slash Google Apps slash Google Workspace is all essentially the same set of products and services from Google. Uh, they used to call it Google Tools, uh, and they still do call it Google Tools for some products. And then for other services and products, they call it now the Google Workspace. Um, what that means basically is you can think of Google Workspace as the most commonly used apps for productivity purposes or for work purposes. So it might include your email, which for Google is, is Gmail, uh, your meeting room application, which is gonna be Google Meet, uh, your calendar, which is called Google Calendar, and then things like Drive, Sheets, Docs, and uh, which one did I miss? Presentation, slides. Um, and then uh, your like forms, and drawings and fusion tables, which is another thing. Uh, the essentials here that we're going to talk about today are all part of that workspace. But I'm going to show you a list of all the additional tools too. There are so many Google Apps out there um, that you might you might end up uh, deciding you want to use. Okay, so essentially, Google Tools and Google Workspace. It's basically Google's products and services. Um, they range from cloud-based productivity to apps that you can download for your phone. Um, so if you have an Android phone, you will probably already have a Google account. Uh, and with that Google account, you can access things like Gmail and Google Drive, um, and you use the Google Play Store on your Android phone. Um, for those of us with iPhones, it's pretty similar. You can download the apps from the App Store, and then it's all kind of in that same bundle. 
Okay, now one that I want to cover specifically before we jump into docs, sheets, and slides is called Google Drive. And Google Drive is your cloud based file storage. What that means essentially is that cloud based means essentially it's housed on someone else's computer, that would be Google. So the Google servers and computers house all of these documents that you've created and saved there. And the way you get to them is by signing into your Google account and then opening up Google Drive. So Google Drive works a lot like the hard drive on your computer where you might use File Explorer or Finder to find your files. So it's, all kind of bundled under Google Drive, and that's where things live when you save them. Okay, so uh, it also includes, like we talked about, the workspace. So you get to Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, Forms, Drawings, and Tables, and all of that kind of, and Google Meet from that workspace uh, within Google Drive. Okay, so it also allows for that real time collaboration because it is on the internet. Um, so you can do live collaboration with other users. And then it also has that component of being able to store your files um, within that service. So it's not only storing those things, but it's allowing you to create new things as well. Okay, any questions about Google Drive? And Google not Workspace? so far. Okay, we're gonna keep, keep trudging along here, okay. So Google Workspace is essentially the same thing. It's the cloud-based office suite that's geared toward productivity and collaboration. Um, it is targeted a little bit more toward business or education, um, but it is also meant for personal use. So Workspace includes Gmail, which is your, your email through Google, Docs, Drive, Meet, which is your uh, meeting room capabilities, Sheets, which is basically spreadsheets, Slides, which is like um, presenting, present, doing presentations, and then your calendar, okay? So Google Docs is essentially the word processing application. So it's the one where you can type up letters or resumes. Uh, Google Sheets are spreadsheets. So if you wanted to create a monthly budget, um, if you wanted to create a schedule, for example, uh, if you wanted to do, I'm trying to think of other examples of spreadsheets, um, some data analysis, perhaps you might use Sheets. Uh, Google Slides is the slide presentation application. So if you were having to say present, um, if you went on vacation and you wanted to present a slideshow of your vacation photos, um, but you also wanted to include a little bit of information about each of the places you visited, you might use um, slides. So each of these has an equivalent. Um, if you're familiar with Microsoft Office products, each of these has an equivalent product in the Microsoft suite. So Google Docs is like Microsoft Word, Google Sheets is like Excel, and Google Slides is like PowerPoint. So if you're familiar with those, you'll see that there's a lot of similarities between them. Okay, so files that you create uh, with Google Docs, Sheets, or Slides are automatically saved in your Google Drive. So that's why we also need to know what Google Drive is and how it works in order to use the other three things. Okay, all three have corresponding apps that can be downloaded to the smartphones or tablets or used on your, um, you can also use them on a desktop computer when you get online, okay. Files can also be downloaded and they can be opened with corresponding Microsoft products like Word, um, PowerPoint, or Excel, um, though you may have to adjust a little bit for the formatting because sometimes they don't fully translate all pieces of it correctly over, okay? And we'll talk a little bit about that when we get to the downloading section. Okay, any questions so far? No questions so far. All right, so I'm gonna give you a list of some additional Google tools here. Um, if you're interested, we could certainly have classes on these in the future as well, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how many different things Google has created that you have access to with a Google account. So um, Google Keep is a note, a note taking app. Uh, photos, obviously, if you have an Android phone, you might be familiar with Google with the uh, photo app and um, Google Photos. Google Forms includes being able to create things like surveys for people to fill out, um, fillable forms. Drawings allows you to draw pictures. 
Uh, Meet, again, we, we will talk, we will have a class in May on Google Meet and Google Calendar. Um, if you're interested in that, that will be a virtual class at the end of May. Um, analytics is something that folks use for their websites. Google Alerts are a great way to keep track of um, certain subjects or topics online. It basically goes out and creates a whole, creates a list of articles or anytime when the keyword shows up somewhere on the internet. Um, Google Earth, you may have heard of, um, it gives you a chance to look at the Earth, uh, the view of the Earth, and then you can kind of zoom in on specific places. Um, surveys, pay, sky map, translate, hangout, sites, charts, voice, street view, and maps. All of these things are things you can explore if you want. Um, and uh, we could spend time on, you know, we could spend a whole class on each one of these if we wanted. Um, so if there's one in particular that you'd like to learn more about, please let us know. Okay. And these are all listed in the handout, so you don't need to write them down or anything. Okay. And now I will go ahead and jump into our live demo of Google Drive, Docs, Sheets, and Slides. And feel free to jump in with questions if you have them as we go through stuff, okay? All right, I'm gonna try to do a new share and see if everyone can see. Do we all see the Gmail account, I'm hoping? Yes, I see it now. Okay, so this is the library's demo account um, where we can do things with Google. And what I'm going to start with is we're going to jump into Google Drive so we can get a little bit of a um, sort of the navigation, kind of the lay of the land um, in Google Drive first. The first thing I'm going to do when I'm in my Gmail account is come over to the right hand side and I'm going to look at these icons up at the top right. So the question mark would be support or if you have any need to help where you can put in any questions. The settings is going to be the gear thing here, the gear. Um, I almost say gear shift, which I used to do all the time. It looks like a little gear, um, like a cog in a wheel. Then we have this grid of nine dots, and that's going to be where we're going to go to get to all of our apps, including Google Drive, Sheets, Docs, Slides, Photos, um, Forms, all of those things are going to be in here. And then the farthest thing over is your Google account. So it should have the first letter of your first name that you've put in there, okay? And that's where you could do things like uh, change your password and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go to these nine little dots. So I'm gonna open that first. I'm hoping you can see that there's a list of icons here. Yes. And we can scroll all the way down through them. So these are all Google tools in essence that we could use or do something with. We're gonna focus on specifically today, Google Drive, which looks a little bit like a triangle. I think it looks a little bit like Sim the game Simon Says, where there's the three colors. Um, so we're going to spend more time there. And then we're also going to spend time with Docs, which has the blue, looks like a text document. Sheets, which is the green, it looks like a little grid. And then Slides, which looks like a little rectangle and is yellow. And each of these colors is also important because it corresponds to the uh, the, each of those products. So you can think Google Docs is blue, Sheets is green, and Slides is yellow, okay? Um, I think with Microsoft products, it Google Docs is, or sorry, with Microsoft products, Microsoft Word is blue, Excel is green, and I think PowerPoint is actually red. So think of the yellow it, it, with Google Slides is equivalent to the Microsoft PowerPoint, which is red. And you'll see what I mean there in just a second um, once we get into them. And then you can see, of course, there's other other apps down here. We are going to go ahead and go into Drive to start. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on Google Drive. And then I'm hoping you notice that up here on the right hand side, when I click on Google Drive from this list of apps, it allows me to open a new tab up here at the top of my browser. And now I can go between PowerPoint go, bleh, sorry, excuse me, go between my Gmail, which is my Google Mail, and my Drive within Google. Hoping, did you see that, Rebecca, where it switched yes. back and forth? Okay, yes. perfect. Okay, so now we are in our Google Drive. And think of your Google Drive essentially as off-site storage for your things. So what I, the analogy I usually give is if you're at school 
and you have a locker, right? You have a physical locker, and then you might have stuff in your backpack. So your backpack, when you take it away and you take it to your different classrooms, is a little bit like Google Drive, right? So I've put my books and my documents that I need for that class, and I go to that classroom. So I'm physically in a different location, but I can still access all of my files and stuff that I need for that class. So it's like a virtual locker, okay? So um, I'm already logged in because we have already logged into our demo account. Um, if you wanna get an account for free, uh, Google allows you to get an account for free and you can start at either um, mail.google.com or drive.google.com to get your account, okay? Once you've logged in though, this is what you should see. And again, if you look in the far right corner, we have those same icons for support, settings, the nine dots for getting to different applications, and then my Google account information, okay? The other things we have along the top, we have a search function where we can search in Drive, and you should see a little magnifying glass. Whenever you see a magnifying glass as an icon and it doesn't have a plus or minus sign, it means search. If it has a plus or minus sign, that usually means zoom in or zoom out. But if it doesn't have plus or minus sign, it's search, okay? So if we wanted to search for a specific file that is contained in our Google Drive, we could do that here. Now, if you've attended any of our other tech workshops before, you know that Rebecca and I like to use cats um, and animals as examples for our demonstrations usually. So if I put in the word kitty, here, for example, and you'll see immediately that there's a folder, and we know it's a folder because of this little folder icon right here that says cat photos in January 2022. And then we also have a test presentation from uh, July 27th of 2021 that apparently must also include the word kitty. Okay, so if I go ahead and pick, let's pick cat photos in January 2022. There we go, we've got kittens in grass. So this file is gonna come up when I search in Drive. This is a lot like what would happen on your computer if you're using File Explorer or Finder to search for a file on your computer, okay? And you'll see here that right underneath where we have our search in Drive, we also have what's known as the file path, which, me, which means we're going from my Drive we're going into the folder called cat photos, and then we're seeing whatever files are in that folder, okay? Over here on the very far left side, we do see the logo for Drive. And if I click on that, that will take me back home to my landing page in Google Drive, okay? Any questions about that, about that so far? I don't see any so far. Okay, great. Okay, so if we look here at our file path right below our search, and you'll notice right now it just says My Drive. Well, My Drive, if I click on this, there's lots of other things I can do within My Drive. I can organize my files by creating folders, just like you can do on your computer. I could upload a file from my computer into my Google Drive, or I can upload an entire folder. So if I had an entire folder full of cat photos, I could say, okay, let's take this folder of cat photos from my, my personal computer, and we're going to upload that up here to my cloud in my Google Drive, okay? And then we can also create documents, okay, and different kinds of documents. We can also do that from over here on the left-hand side where it says new. So if I tap on new, this button over here, I can create a new folder like we just talked about. I can upload a file from my computer, and that would be whatever computer I'm on currently. I can upload a folder, again, from my, my current computer, and I can create new documents from here as well, okay? And if I click more, that gives me other um, Google tools that I could create something in, okay? On the left-hand side down here, we also have the ability where it says computers, that would link to my specific desktop computer and allow me to see if it's been shared. So if my computer has been shared, um, that means that the folders are syncing. So if I put something new in the folder on my computer, if I've linked these things, then it'll also go into my drive automatically, okay? 
If anything's been shared with me, if you remember a few minutes ago, we talked about how the nice thing about uh, Google products is that they can also be shared with other people and you can collaborate. So if anything has been shared with me, it's gonna show up here. So here are some things that have been shared with me. Anything that's recent is something I've worked on in the last maybe a uh, couple of months or so. So you can see we have in our recents, we have what I've worked on today and then stuff that I've worked on earlier this year and then stuff that's older than that, okay? And when you see these, keep in mind that right now, all of the stuff that you're seeing here is stuff that I have, um, I haven't put it into any particular kind of order. Right now, it's just in the order of what's most recent, okay? Anything that I favorited or starred is gonna be in this starred section. So I can always star something if I want um, to make sure that it's something that's saved and easy for me to get to. There's also the trash where I can put anything that I no longer need. If I'm cleaning out my drive, just like cleaning off your hard drive or you know, throwing things you no longer need, shredding them or throwing them in the trash, it's exactly what you can do here, okay? And then down at the bottom here, it shows me how much space I've used of my free storage that I get through Google. So you get 15 gigabytes for free. Um, if you'd like more of a tutorial on Google Drive, we do teach Google Drive specifically as part of our intro to cloud storage class, um, which I believe we will have later this summer. Um, if you wanted more of a, a deep dive into Drive specifically. But since today we're concentrating on docs, sheets, and slides, uh, if there aren't any questions about Google Drive, we'll go ahead and move on. Uh, but if you do have questions about Google Drive, go ahead and put them in the chat and I'll go ahead and answer them. I do have a question actually. Yes. Um, I know we're gonna talk about how to share a document later on, but yes. someone asked, um, they want to share a photo or a photo directory with other people from Google Drive. Yes, you can do that as well. Um, what you're actually gonna do is it, it would be from Google Photos instead of specifically from Drive, unless you upload them specifically to Drive. So if we come back here to my Drive and you see we've got this photo here that says Kitty and I click on Kitty like this, from this place here, I can come over to the three little dots here and click share. And then I could share that specific photo with someone else, okay? So if you wanna share a whole bunch of photos and they, they are in a folder in your Google Drive, you can then just share that folder and give them permission to the folder. And then they can see all of, all of the photos. Otherwise you can use Google Photos, which is another app that you can find up here in your app list, which looks like this. It looks kind of like a pinwheel um, and you can go into photos and create your al create an album there and then share that album. I'll also include that in the follow-up email as well, because yes. Google is really good about giving you kind of step-by-step -step directions from their website. So I'll make sure to include that in the follow-up. Yes. And, and since we're not covering uh, Google Photos today, well, yeah, I think the, the follow-up there. And if we have time at the end, I can I can show you an example of how that works too. Okay. So I'm, I'm gonna put a little, I'll put a little note here for at the end. Okay, great question though. Um, and I do find that we do that a lot where we need to share uh, photos with other people. Oh yeah, definitely. That's the nice thing about um, this whole section on Google is the shareability and the collaboration possibilities. Absolutely. Okay, other questions about Drive? I don't see any so far, but I'll keep you okay. updated. Okay, so I like to go to Docs, Sheets, and Slides through my Google Drive. You don't have to do that though. You can also directly go to each of these apps. Um, what I like to do though, is I like to come over here to New and then come down to Docs, Sheets, or Slides and then Create from here. So if I click on this arrow right here, I can either create a blank document in Google Docs or Sheets or Slides, or I can go from a template. And um, if you remember, we talked a little bit about that at the beginning, where if I clicked from a template, I now have the option to pick a template from this list, and then I could create my, my file from there. So if you, for example, were looking to create a resume, you might click on Spearmint, 
this resume, experiment resume. And that's going to automatically generate that template. I'm hoping you can see the template. Yes. OK. And then you can go in and put your information in instead. And you would go through your skills and all the other stuff and just change it so that it's your stuff instead of their um, placeholder information. OK, once you've done that, you actually don't have to save it yourself. Um, you do want to give it a new name. So up here at the very top left corner, you'll see that right now this is called resume. I'm going to give it a new name. And I'm going to call it CPL test resume. Once I've done that, you can see now it says that it's saved in my in my drive right here. OK, then I could tell it not just to save it in my drive, but just like on your home computer where you get to tell the file where you want it to go, I could tell it what folder to go into in my Google Drive. OK, so I could do career search, which makes sense for a resume and pick career search. And then I'm going to say move and it's going to go into that folder for me. OK, and now I could go ahead and do whatever I need to do. I can make more changes. So if I was going to make this my email address, and as soon as I've made any changes to it, you'll see up here next to where it says CPL uh, test resume, there's a little star if I want to favorite it. There's the uh, folder with the little arrow, which means I'm going to move it to a new location. I'm going to save it maybe not in career search, but in a, a subfolder called resume. And then there's this little check mark with a cloud. This is uh gonna tell me that i have when i have saved it and if you see just down below that where it says last edit was seconds ago this is going to show me the document history so whenever i make a change to it or someone else makes a change to it it's going to immediately update so instead of having to go up to file and say save every time you've made a change it's actually doing that automatically for you so as soon as i make a change so if I change this to my email address here at, or my phone number here at work, see how it says saving up here at the top where the little cloud with the check mark is, and then it says save to drive. That means it's automatically saving that change that I just made. OK, if I am like, oops, I didn't actually mean to do that. And I go to undo it. The top button over here on the far left side that's facing left is the undo button. So if I undo that, and I go back a couple steps, see how it now says saving again, and now it says save to drive. That's un, undone my things that I just did. I'm gonna go ahead and say redo those things though. So I'm gonna use the other arrow that goes to the right and redo those changes I made. And then again, it's gonna save it automatically, okay? Any questions about using, go jumping into a template? Not like that, that I see so far. Okay, so I'm going to show you real quick what templates look like in some of the in the two other things. So if I come over here and I say new, and I'm going to go to Google Sheets, click there, pick from template. You'll notice this is the exact same process for all three of these. Then I could pick, say, annual budget, right? And I'll click on annual budget, and it's going to make an annual budget tracker for me. And then I would use the template um, by starting to enter my balance down here on row 13 and then go through and plan and track and do all the monthly spending stuff that I need to. OK, if I wanted to save it again, I come up here to where it says annual budget, just click on it and then edit how you need to make it say annual budget. Let's say my starting balance here, I'm going to put in. 10,000 instead, and note, right away it's saving it. Now it's saved to drive. If I wanna move it from drive to, let's say career search again, that folder, I just have to click on the little folder with the little symbol, and I say career search and move. Then it's gonna move it from the general drive into that specific folder, okay? Same thing can be done with presentations. If I go to new, slides from a template and let's say i'm going to pick a photo album let's say i'm going to show my photos to someone okay i've got my west coast trip here put my name in here and let's say i'm hoping i can go 
in 2022 on a West Coast trip. And you'll see it's already saved it. And then I can make whatever changes I need to make. And then hit that folder there and move it to where I want to move it, what folder I want to move it to. So if I say career search, move, and it'll move it. If I need to create a new folder, I can hit that one that says that's a little folder with a plus sign. So you're not beholden to already existing folders when you create a new document or a new template, something from a template. You can always put it in a, a different folder if you need to. Okay, hoping that makes sense. Okay, so let's say I'm going to save this as CPL test two. So we're somewhat consistent in what we're doing. And then I'm going to say save that in career search as well. Okay, so now it's been moved to there. Okay, so that's templates. Any questions about using templates? I don't see any so far. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on and we'll take a little bit deeper dive into Google Docs specifically. Now, if you remember what I said earlier, you can get there from over here on your, what I call your app grid, which is these Google apps, the little, the nine little dots, and you can come down to docs that way. But if you notice up here at the top left, the address is docs.google.com. So if I wanted to go directly to Google Docs, and I opened a new tab. So up here at the top, if you see that plus symbol, I'm gonna hit that plus symbol and type in docs.google.com, just like that, and hit enter. And it's gonna bring me up to that home screen um, or what I call the landing page for Google Docs specifically, okay? And you can also see here that if you wanna start a new document that's blank, you can pick right from that big uh, multicolored plus sign here, or you can pick from various templates right here. Okay, I'm hoping everybody saw that. Uh, can see this here to start a new document, yes. blank, or pick from the template gallery. If you want more more options from the template gallery, if you tap on template gallery right there, did everybody see that? Let me go back for a second. Oops, just within Docs. So if you see up here on the far left side where it says template gallery and then there's an arrow with a back button, I'm going to go back one second or one step. So you can see right here, template gallery, it's just got these six. But if I tap on template gallery, it'll expand and give me the rest of the possible templates that I could pick from in all their categories. Okay. So it's just like going from Drive when you've picked from template is what you get from here, okay? So there's two different, um, like Rebecca usually says, there's more than one way to get to stuff here um, or anything really with computers and, and programs. So there's two different ways to get to Google Docs and use a template or create a blank document, okay? Uh, you can also see down here that it says recent documents. This is the CPL test resume that we just made a few minutes ago, and then some other documents that we've created in the past. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, create a new doc from right here on this Google Docs landing page. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the blank here, and that's going to open a new document for me that's untitled and ready for me to insert whatever I'm going to do um, and whatever I'm going to create, okay? Any questions about opening a new document or creating a new document? I don't see anything so far. Okay, perfect. So once I've created the document, I have a, cho I have a choice of what I can do to start. I can either start typing out my document or I can come up here and give it a name. So up here in the top left corner, you see where it says untitled document. I'm going to go ahead and create a name for it. And then once I create that name, that's when it's going to start saving. OK, then I can do whatever I need to with it. Now, it will save untitled documents, too, but it's a lot harder to find them if you have a whole bunch of untitled documents that are hanging out in the gallery in the gallery where you're looking at all your stuff. So I recommend making sure you give everything a name. OK, so now that I have changed the name and it's been saved, it's automatically going to save it every time I make an update or do something down here that changes it. Okay. The menu toolbar, if you look at, which is basically everything 
from the top of the browser window here down to underneath where you get the ruler is going to be considered your menu toolbar. If you're familiar with Microsoft products, it's called the ribbon in Microsoft products, but for Google, they call it the toolbar. Okay, so everything in here is part of the toolbar. And you'll notice, like we just talked about our icons for undo and redo. This is for printing. This would be spelling and grammar check um, if you want to paint something. So you can see it looks similar to Microsoft Word in that Microsoft Word also has a bunch of icons like this. And when you hover your mouse over the top of it, it tells you what it is or what it does. It's also similar to the Microsoft products in that you have essentially tabs, but in this case, you have a file menu, an edit menu, a view, insert, format, tools, add-ons, and help, okay? So it's a it looks a little bit more pared down than what you get with um, the full Microsoft suite, um, but a lot of the, it does a lot of the same, it can do a lot of the same things, the same processes. Okay, uh, if I was to click this large blue icon over here, this will take me back to the docs home. So it takes me back to that docs landing page. And then I should be able to see recent documents. Here's the one I just created and made. So now if I jump back into there, I'm right back into that document I just made. Okay, um, to share this document, I'm going to go ahead and say, Okay, so I've created a document, I'm, I've given it some text, and let's say I want to share it with someone else so that we can collaborate. Up here at the top right, now if you notice, when we were in Drive, I'm going to switch back, Did you, can you see when we switched back? Yes. To Drive? Up here on the right side and in Google Drive, we have a different set of tools. We had the help and the settings and getting to other apps and then our Google account. When you look at the top of Google Drive or Google Docs, you have some different cape options up here at the top, okay? So the first one is to open comment history, which means if someone that you're collaborating with makes a comment like, oh, did you really mean to do this? Or maybe you should expand this section. Maybe you should talk about X, Y, Z. That's all gonna be in the comment history. Then to present to a meeting, you would hit present and then all of the toolbars will go away and it'll just be your document that'll show on the screen. And then you can also share your document. And if I wanna share this document, I would click on share and then I could pick the people that I wanna share it with and give them certain privileges. And we're gonna do that in just a minute uh, when we get to our section on sharing. But I want you to know that it's all up here in that right corner. So on each, Google Docs, Sheets and Slides, the consistent thing that you'll see up here in the right corner is the comment history, ways to present it, and ways to share it, okay? And then we'll talk about sharing a little bit more when we get to that point. Okay, now there are two things that are a little bit unique about Google Docs compared to Microsoft products. And that is because it's web-based, if you want to copy and paste something, into your document if you're using a different browser than google's browser which is google chrome you have to use keyboard shortcuts so let me show you the keyboard shortcut for copy cut and paste you'll have to use those so to copy something it's the control key plus the uh c key for windows computers you may want to zoom in just slightly on that text that is a little bit small. Okay. And then if or you're on... just increase the size, whatever works for you. Yeah. Okay. And then for command, it's command plus C on a Mac. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And what I'm doing to zoom in, I'm actually hitting the control key and the plus key on my computer, on my keyboard. But you can also zoom in going up here to the very top right corner where you see the three little dots up here and where it says zoom and go and hit this plus or minus to make things bigger. This is one of the things I use all the time when I'm helping people with computers. 
because lots of times I can't see stuff very well, so I have to make it bigger. So I will zoom in. Okay. Okay. So to copy something and put it into your Google Doc, Sheet, or Slide, you're going to have to use those keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this plus sign and just grab a lorem ipsum generator text. Um, lorem ipsum is something that uh, web designers use to just have like a, a space where they um, can generate text and just fill it in until they know what text is actually going to go in there. Um, so this isn't actually lorem ipsum text. This is like their description of it. But I'm just going to go ahead and highlight it. Control C on my Windows computer. Come back to my text document. Hit return and then hit Control V as in Victor, which is paste, and that'll paste the text in here for me. If I was in Firefox or Internet Explorer or Internet Edge, if I was trying to do this using my mouse and said copy and paste, it's going to tell me to use those keyboard shortcuts. So that's why I'm teaching, uh, teaching those keyboard shortcuts right now. So keyboard shortcuts are the way to go with uh, with Google. OK, so that was copy. Now, if I want to cut something, to cut something is also control plus Z or sorry, plus X on Windows and command plus X on Mac. OK, and that will get you cutting. So if you think of if you were at a copy machine and you were making a copy, that's going to be your physical copy. You're then going to have two pieces of paper when you make copies. So it stays where it originally was and you have a new version. With cut, it's like taking scissors and cutting out the bit from the piece of paper that has your text in it and moving it somewhere else. So if I take this lorem ipsum text and I highlight it and I hit control X, which is to cut, it has now moved, gone away. And now I'm going to hit control V as in Victor, and that'll paste it down below. OK, so that's cut. Now we've already used this one. Does anyone remember what I said for the key that I'm going to hit to paste something? You can pop it in the chat if you remember. I don't see anybody typing okay. anything. It's going to be V as in Victor, OK, to, to paste. That's on Windows. Whoops, Windows. And then for a Mac, it's going to be Command plus V for the Mac. And that's going to allow you to paste something. Um, if anybody wants to know why it's not P as in Paul, it's because the P shortcut is going to give you print. So that would be to print something. So if I hit Control P, you're going to see my print. Hopefully, you're seeing that pop up that says yeah, print yes. to the workroom printer. That's what happens when you do um, Control P as in Paul. So if I'm doing Control V as in Victor, there comes my text right there. OK, and that's something I want to make clear to everybody because it's it's coming from the browser. So if you're using a browser, even if you're using Google Chrome, where you could do the mouse version where you take it like this and you right click and you say copy and then you paste it by right clicking and saying paste. If you're in Google Chrome, it'll do that with no trouble. If you're in Internet Explorer, Edge, Safari, um, Firefox, it'll tell you to use those keyboard shortcuts. So it's good to know those keyboard shortcuts and um, and then utilize them when you can. Any questions? I don't see any so far. Someone did note that um, they were using a tablet and I did okay. respond back that if you are using a tablet or a mobile device like a smartphone, your experience is going to look different because today we yes. are demonstrating on a desktop computer. Yes, and um, the tablet view is a little bit even more pared down than what you see here for what your toolbar will look like up at the top. Um, and when you're using those what we call keyboard shortcuts um, on a, a keyboard on a tablet, when you highlight instead of 
what we do where it's right clicking, if you highlight like this, what should happen is if you long press on it, which means you hold it down for just like a couple seconds, a little box will come up and it'll say copy, or it'll say select all and then copy and then paste. So yeah, since we're demonstrating on the desktop, it's a little different today. And I that is a great question. Yes, definitely. Because yeah, a lot of the stuff we're referencing is not going to be your experience. And exactly. I will um, follow up with that email again and put in some information about how to use these different apps on your device. Yes. Um, of course, you can access it on an internet browser on your device, but it's probably easier if you go into the dedicated app. So you can download the Google Docs app and the Sheets app and the Slides app as separate apps. There is also a Google Drive app as well. I have all of yes. those on my, on my tablet and on my phone. Same, yes. And then you can access them the same, I mean, in the same way, as long as you have an internet connection, you can go into those apps, you can open your documents. Um, in fact, for, for me, we had, uh, when uh, my spouse and I got married, we had the Google app where we had shared the list of photos that we wanted with my you know, my personal tenant and a couple of other people and the photographer so that they knew, you know, they could just go down the list and we all had it. Every, we didn't even need to print it out because everybody had it on their phones and everybody could look at it at the same time and we could just cross off, you know, so my personal tenant was crossing off the, the photos as we got them um, so that we didn't miss anything. Um, so that was one example of collaborating with someone else and then we all had it on our tablets and phones. So. And I should say the apps are totally free to download and use. Yes. yes, they are. Yep. Again, with your Google account, which is also, I mean, a Google account is free um, in the sense that there's no monetary require, requirement for it. You don't have to pay for it with money. Um, you are giving Google some permissions to do, um, to like collect your data. Um, so just keep that in mind too. But it is free as in not a monetary cost. Okay, so the next thing I want to cover is spell check um, real quick, just because there is a spell check here, but it's not as obvious as it is with, uh, say, the Microsoft products. So if I want to spell check this document, you'll see down here, um, it is underlined, this popularized is underlined in red. That's because um, Google, uh, the Google Docs has flagged it as something that maybe is not spelled correctly, or perhaps there's a grammatical issue with it. So if I come up here to the top where I have the little um, icons up here, the one, the A with the check mark, that is our spelling and grammar check, which, and then you can also see that it gives us a keyboard shortcut to start your spelling and grammar check. I don't always remember these other keyboard shortcuts. So I like to just come up here to where the icon is. Um, but if you're a person who loves keyboard shortcuts, by all means, feel free to learn them and use them that way. Okay, so I can either go here and hit this, and then it's gonna start my spelling and grammar check, or I can go through um, tools up here at the top the, for the menu, the menu for tools, and then tap spelling and grammar and do spelling and grammar check. I could also, and it's automatically gonna do spelling suggestions and grammar suggestions. The personal dictionary is really helpful. If you wanna add words, to um, Google to say, hey, these are always spelled correctly. I know I'm spelling them correctly, like my name. I can add to my personal dictionary and say, this word is always spelled correctly. So don't ever underline it. And then you'll see if I put my name in here now, it's not gonna underline my last name, okay? That's using the dictionary. You can get to that from tools, spelling and grammar, personal dictionary. Uh, I use this a lot for um, my undergrad degree was in art history. So a lot of times artist names, I will put them into the personal dictionary so that the grammar check doesn't flag the artist names every single time I write about them. Uh, but let's go ahead and hit spelling and grammar check. And then you can see it's going to give me a suggestion and ask for me to change popularized with an S to popularized with a Z. If I want to accept the change, I just tap accept. If I want to ignore the change, I can tap ignore. If I want more options, and usually anytime you see this too, just like with the uh, the search being a magnifying glass, more options is usually going to be three little dots. So if there's more things you can possibly do, always click on the three little dot three little dots if you're not finding 
what you want to do because it may be in there. So here it's asking if I want to add popularized with the S to the dictionary, to view the dictionary, or to accept all of the instances of this word. Because remember, we copied it and pasted it. So we actually have it twice. So I can say accept all to found. Now it's going to be like document looks good. And then you'll notice popularized was changed here and it was changed here. OK, so that's what happens with spell check. And I like to mention that just because it's, it is in a slightly different spot than it is in some of the other text based um, word processing apps. All right. Are there any questions about Google Docs before we move on to Sheets? We're kind of just dipping our toes in here. Um, in May, we will have classes on each of these that go into more detail. So we'll have a, a workshop that's an hour and a half on Docs, a workshop that's an hour and a half on Sheets, and then an hour and a half on um, slides as well. Okay. I don't see any questions, but I'll keep you updated if any come okay. through. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and X out of my Susan Winkler test document. And what I'm going to do to do that is just come up here to the tab at the top and just hit this little X. Okay. And that's going to take it out. Now, if I come back to drive, we're going to see that what I've just worked on, I'm going to refresh it here. And you should see here at my drive at the top where it says suggested. These are going to be things I recently worked on. And here's that document we just created with the lorem ipsum text. Okay. So now if I want to create a sheet or a spreadsheet, I can, again, I can click on a new tab and I can go to sheets.google.com like this to start a new spreadsheet, picking either blank or a template. And you'll see it looks just like it did for, Word, for um, docs where if I click over here where it says template gallery on the right hand side, that'll expand the template gallery and give me more options of templates that I could use. Or if I hit the back button, I can then pick blank or I can pick recent spreadsheets that I've that I've accessed. OK, any questions? At the start here, I don't see any. OK, perfect. Um, again, up here at the top, if I also hit um, where the Sheets logo is, that takes me to this landing page. Okay. If I wanted to go from Google Drive, if I click back over here and I say new and I come down to Google Sheets and hit the arrow, I can either go blank spreadsheet or from a template. So if I hit blank spreadsheet, here we go. We're in our blank spreadsheet now. So again, I can go ahead and rename it to give it a title. like that, click down here, immediately it's gonna save it. And it says it's saved to drive. If I wanna move the location, just like we saw before, I could move it to career search, to getting started, to whatever folder I want. In this case, I'm gonna just leave it alone. I'm not gonna move it to a folder so we can see where it goes if it's not in a folder, okay? So, okay. So um, we've, we've retitled it and now just like with um, the last document we worked on, we know the last edit was seconds ago. We could open the version history if we wanted, and we could work in here. Okay. If I want to share it through the menu toolbar up here again in the top right corner, that looks just the same except that it's green instead of blue. I could hit share, put in the name, uh, email address of the person I want to share it with, and share it with them. To not to do get out of that, you just click anywhere and that'll get you out of that. Okay, so let's go ahead and just put in uh, two, two, four, three, five, whatever, something to just put in there. Now you see it's saving. Okay, um, in the same way that we had to do cut and paste with the keyboard shortcuts, you also have to do that with Google Sheets and Google Slides. So if I wanted to take that lorem ipsum text again and oops copy i'm going to go ahead and highlight it control c on my keyboard or command c go back to my document pick whatever cell i want to put it in and hit control v and it's going to put it in that cell okay then i can expand my cell out so i just double clicked 
between A and B, or in this case, between B and C, um, to make it so that all that text fits in the one cell like this. Okay. Okay. Um, do, does anyone want me to, to demonstrate cut and paste here in sheets? Are we feeling pretty good about that having done it in docs? I can do it either way. So, okay. Why don't I go? I don't, ahead I don't see anybody saying yes or no. So, okay. I'll go ahead and do it here too. So, if I'm going to take what's in this in cell B8 and want to move it somewhere, I would hit control copy. And then I could copy it to say B13, control V. That'll copy it. If I want to cut it and move it somewhere else, control X on my keyboard and control V on my keyboard. Okay, and in here you can also use edit, cut, copy and paste because I'm in Google Docs. If I wasn't in, or if I'm in a Google Chrome browser, if I wasn't in the Chrome browser and I tried to do that using right click, copy, right click, paste, it's gonna say use the keyboard shortcuts. Okay, okay. Now again, if I wanna do spell check, you can also do spell check in uh, the slides and sheets. And to do that, we just, again, go up to tools, spelling, spell check. And it's gonna say no spelling suggestions. So in this case, it doesn't have a problem with uh, popularized because we, let's see, why doesn't it have us? Let's see. <laughs> I think it's the same one we used, or did I grab a different piece of text? Let's see. Nope, popularized. So in this case, Google Sheets does not have a problem with the S in popularized. Um, if I spelled something like, let's take another one like specimen. Let me spell that incorrectly. Okay, so now if I look at this, since I spelled something incorrectly and I go to tools and spelling, spell check, it's gonna change that. So you see now it says specimen and it's like, I think you meant specimen. And you can say, actually, you're right, I did, and go ahead and hit change, and then it'll change it. Okay. Okay. Any questions about sheets? And again, if you want uh, more of a tutorial into a deep dive, we will have that in May, uh, where we'll go into more detail about how to actually use formulas and functions in here, how to format the text and all of those things. So this is kind of dipping our toe in. I don't see any questions. Okay, alrighty. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the little X up here at the tab to close out of my document. And then let's return to Google Drive just for a second. Refresh by re hitting the refresh button over here on the browser that's off on the right hand left-hand side there. And now we're looking, the suggested is gonna be things that are recent. So here you see, it says my, here's my test spreadsheet. But if I didn't look at the suggested, I could also come down to the files and find it under, let's see, I said it was test spreadsheet. Let's see, and it should be in general. Yep, so it's gonna be under, so it's just under suggested right now because we didn't put it in a, in a folder or anything. But if I did put it in a folder, like we say we put it in a career search, I open that up. Here's that test annual budget, the annual res the test resume, and the test photo album, because I put them in that folder. Okay, I'm going to go back to clicking on my drive here. So we're back to our drive landing page. And we'll go ahead and I'm going to take a quick sip of sip of water. And then we'll talk about Google Slides. So if you have any questions about docs or sheets, go ahead and feel free to put them in the chat um, while I take a sip of water here. Okay, ready to move on to slides? Yeah, I don't see any uh, questions. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so I can, again, I can go from new down to Google Slides from a template, and that'll bring up the template gallery. If I'm like, oh, wait, I actually don't want to use a template. All I have to do from here is click where it says blank. Okay, and that'll give me a blank slideshow. Okay. Now, if you're at all familiar with other presentation software like uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, you'll notice 
that up here at the top where we have our share function and our version history and comments and our present to a meeting, we also have a button that says slideshow. This is going to be how we could present it to an audience where it would be on a projection screen and then we have our view behind the scenes on our own computer. Okay, so if we were to hit slideshow, we could then check presenter view, which means it's going to show a different view to us on our computer, which will have our notes and the upcoming slide. Um, or we can do, and then on the screen, it'll show just that current slide to the people that you're presenting to. Okay, so that's the, the only difference up here with how the toolbar looks um, for present for the presentation mode of Google Slides. Okay, so everything else is very similar. So if I want to start over here and we have a blank presentation and I want to give it, um, let's call it library, whoops, library tour. Okay. Or however we want to, however we want to um, describe or do things with our slideshow. And then up here at the top, because it was an untitled presentation, since I've put in some text, it's going to auto generate text that it thinks we want to use for what we're going to call it. So now it's decided it wants to call it library tour. I'm going to call it CPL test library tour. And then you'll notice as soon as I click out of there, it's saved. You can see the last edit was a second ago and it's ready. It's saved in real time. Okay. The menu toolbar, again, same idea. The icon up at the top left gives you your slides home. So that's gonna take you back to that landing page. And then you have your different menus like file and edit, inserting in case you wanna insert something like a picture. Formatting is gonna let you format your text. Um, you can change the font. You can work in formatting, bullet borders, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can do over here on the left-hand side where your navigation pane is, you can add a new slide. You can duplicate a slide. So if I needed to duplicate the title page, title slide, I could. You can also arrange things in a certain order. You can also drag. If you want to reorder your slides, you can grab it with your left mouse button and move it up and down, just like you can in the Microsoft product PowerPoint. Uh, so you have that option. And just like in our other uh, slot or other two programs, if you want to copy and paste text, for example, our lorem ipsum from the other site, you can grab it, control C to copy, control V to paste. Okay, just like that. All right, then you can also, I'm going to go ahead and change a uh, specimen again so that it is spelled incorrectly. Okay. And notice as I spelled it, can everybody see that okay? I can make it a little bigger too. Oops, let's make my slide bigger. Okay. Do you see how now there's a little squiggly, red squiggly line under specimen? Because it's now spelled incorrectly? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so now I could use tools, spelling, spell check. And it's going to show me again that specimen is spelled incorrectly and what it's going to suggest I change it to. So if I hit change, then it's going to it's going to do that for me. OK, so a lot of things work the same way and the layout is similar for all three of these products. And that's really something I wanted to wanted to emphasize today. OK, any questions about the three of them that we've showed so far? Um, someone, we, someone was clarifying the star that's up near your title there. That means that's going into the starred folder. Is that right? Yeah. So if I star it here and then we go back to Google Drive and we look at starred, we're going to see that that in here. So it's like saying it's a favorite document. That's kind of how I think of it. It's a favorite document that I want to access frequently and I want to be able to find it very easily and quickly. So, but yes, that is exactly what it means. It goes into the start folder. Okay, thank you.
Mm -hmm. Thank you. OK, so and then you can also see, of course, up here that it is the little star is now yellow, meaning that we've selected this as a starred uh, file. OK, so now we're going to move into talking about downloading your files and you can download them from uh, Google and then you can open them in your if you have the Microsoft products, you can open them in the Microsoft products or you can download them just so that you have them for the future too, so that they're no longer just up in your cloud storage in Google Drive. OK, so to do that, if I want to take this um, slideshow, for example, I can go to file. And then down to download, which is in the second the second section here, receipt there where I can see download and I can download it as a PowerPoint document. I can download it as an ODP, as a PDF. Um, for those of you who are not as familiar with PDF, uh, PDF is, is something that is uh, a more universal file type. So almost anyone with a computer can read PDFs. If you download it as a PowerPoint, that PPTX, then the people on the other end have to have PowerPoint in order to be able to open it. Um, and that can be tricky sometimes because you don't um, necessarily know if they have PowerPoint ahead of time. OK, uh, JPEG would be a specific image, and that would just be this current slide that says Library 2 or Awesome Sauce, as opposed to the PowerPoint and PDF, which would be all of the slides. So since we have three slides here, if we did JPEG, it would just be this current slide. Okay, PNG, same idea, it would just be the current slide, and SVG, which is scalable vector graphic, would also just be the current slide. Um, so if you have a whole power, a whole presentation, uh, generally you might want to use PowerPoint or PDF. Okay. All right. Any questions about that before I actually go ahead and download it and show it what it looks like? I don't see any, but I think I sh we should also note that it will change formatting depending, of course, if you're in Google Docs or Google Sheets. So since we're in slides, of course, it's going to show the option to save in PowerPoint. But if we were in Google Doc, it would give the option for us to save as a Microsoft Word document. Yes, and, then, and I'm going to I'll demo that in just a second, too. Sure. OK, I just wanted to make sure because um, it will yes. look slightly different depending on which Google app you're in. Yes, when you go and to download. Rebecca is absolutely right. It does change, can can change the formatting. It doesn't always change it, but it can change it. So before I go ahead and download it, I'm actually going to go ahead and apply a theme to this um, because that's a little bit easier to see when it changes the formatting or does something to it. So I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and give it a theme. So let's go ahead and pick format options. Oh, I want to be on the whole thing here. Sorry, not just on my text. So up here where it says background, layout, theme, transition, um, just like you have those options in PowerPoint, transition is when you go from one slide to another. You can do something like wipe or look like it's turning the page, do curtains, things like that. I'm going to go ahead and pick a theme. So let's go ahead and pick like this theme. OK, so we've picked this theme and we're going to say file, download, and we're going to download it as a PowerPoint. OK, so it's going to go ahead and download it as a PowerPoint. And now you're going to see, I'm hoping, I might have to share this as a separate window. Can you see where it says library tour? Yes. With our, and it's got the, and we we're in PowerPoint, it's red up at the top. Mm, actually, no, it's still in Google, uh, okay. Google Slides. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to share it again so that you can see when it's in a PowerPoint. So let me stop for just a second. OK, so I just download it and now I'm hoping you can see it's red across the top. Yes. OK, so this is what happened to our uh, our our Google Slides document when we downloaded it as a PowerPoint and then opened it with the Microsoft PowerPoint um, software on our computer. So you can see here library tour, my two slides. And then here's my lorem ipsum text that I copied. So in this case, it didn't change it a whole lot, but it may have changed the text. So you want to make sure that your text is the right um, font and that it's the right size and everything else, um, because it may change some of that formatting in there. OK, uh, this when I get it and download it from Google, it's going to go into my downloads folder 
on my computer. So when you want to find it later, the first place it's going to go is to your downloads. Um, that's the default for most computers. Unless you've changed that default, it'll go into a folder called downloads. Then you can pull it from that downloads folder and you can move it wherever you want to move it or save it wherever you want to save it. But in general, it doesn't, that first time you do it, the only place it's going to go is into the downloads folder. Okay. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing that and I'll show you how that works with um, Google Docs and Google uh, Slide. Um, okay, let me jump back in here with uh, Google Sheets. Okay, so we're back into our test library tour, CPL test library tour. Is that what you're saying, Rebecca? Yes. Okay, perfect. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And now we're back into Google Drive. Go back to my drive. And I'm going to pick our test document here. Okay, so this is the one we made in Docs. So we made this in Google Docs. And I'm going to come over to File, down to Download. And now you'll see I have, I have options for how I want to download this file. I can do it immediately as a DocX, which means it's going to open with Microsoft Word. I could do it as rich text, PDF again, um, plain text, which is .txt, um, a web page or uh, an EPUB, okay? Let's go ahead and pick Microsoft Word since we're working with the two, the two, um, two pieces of software here. And we'll go ahead and say docx. Okay, now that one, when I open it, oh, I'm gonna see if I can, okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open it on my computer so everybody can see it. And we'll see, and in this case, it didn't change that much, but let me go ahead and share this so you can see. And here is how it looks. I'm hoping you can see the blue across the top. Yes. That means we're in Microsoft Word now and you can see how it looks, okay? Now you'll notice also that um, Microsoft spell checking is picking and grammar checking is picking up some other stuff that the, uh, uh, that our grammar and spelling did not pick up in Google Docs. Um, it's because Windows, basically, um, Microsoft Word wants us to do it more formally. So instead of isn't it, it wants us to be is not, or, you know, not to use contractions in, um, you know, like official uh, documents, like as if we were doing a presentation or a, um, a formal paper for a class. Okay. Um, and then we can, you know, we can change and manipulate our formatting. Um, a lot of stuff that happens with templates is where you run into a lot of trouble with the formatting, switching between one and the other. So let's go ahead and grab, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. And I'm going to go ahead and grab from our Google Drive. And I'm going to go ahead and grab instead of our Google Doc. Let's grab our, let's see which one I do. I didn't do the annual budget yet, right? Okay, so we're going to go into our annual budget, which is our sheets. And we'll go to file. I'm hoping you can see the sheet now. Um, yes, it, it say says CPL. annual budget. Yes, CPL okay. test annual budget. Okay. Yes. Okay, perfect. So if I go to file and I go to download, got it. Let me say got it to that pop up there. And I go to download. Here's my, the Microsoft product, which is Excel, or again, a PDF, or a couple of other possible choices. So if I pick Microsoft Excel, it's going to download as an Excel document. I'm going to stop sharing that one, and I'll show you what it looks like when I open it in Excel. Give me just a moment, and we will open it in Excel. And then I will share it. Okay, give me just a second. Ah, okay. So I get an error message when I try to open it in Excel where it says, we found a problem with some content in CPL test annual budget. Do you want us to try to recover as much as we can? And we're going to go ahead and say yes. We want you to go ahead and cover what you can. We're going to enable editing. And then um, we're going to say close. Um, so basically, Excel was trying to translate all the formulas and stuff um, from that template. But since we didn't have any information in the template, it couldn't translate those things. So it's like, we don't know how to compute this part. So um, keep that in mind when you're uh, transferring uh, spreadsheets. So let me go ahead and hit share screen. 
and we'll do this. Okay, so now I'm hoping you can see annual budget track. We have yes. our starting balance. Okay, yes. so that's exactly how it, that's exactly how it works when you take take them and download them, and then pop them into the other programs. Now, of course, anytime you're translating something from one form one format or one product to another, wonky things can happen. So it's always good to go ahead and look through it, make sure it looks right, make sure all the formatting is correct, make sure all the especially in spreadsheets, if the formulas and functions are all correct. Um, that's kind of an important thing to do. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing that. All right, we're getting close to the end here, I promise. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out with us this long. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go ahead and talk about permissions and collaborating with other people now. So. We do have a question about downloading. Sure. Yes. Um, can you show how to download like more than one file at a time? Yes, absolutely, yeah. So um, let me go ahead and share our drive again. So what I usually do if I'm gonna do that is I go ahead and put them all in the same folder on uh, up on Google Drive. So let me X out of this one. So here we are in Google Drive. Um, if I wanna take more than one and download them to the computer, I would say start with something like your folder so let's say I take the getting started folder. Oops, well, there's nothing in that one. Hold on, <laughs> Sorry, vacation photos, no, okay. Uh, tech workshops, no, okay. Um, <laughs> okay, career search. So we'll take stuff that's in career search. So if I wanna take more than one folder, I'll hit the control key, let's see, or shift to see if I can select more than one. Nope, okay. So what I'm gonna do from here for files, career search, I'll take it from up here at the top where it says my drive career search. And I've got the arrow here that I can click to do other things with this file, this folder. And you'll see one of them says download. So if I hit download, this is gonna download all of these files into a folder onto my computer that's here, the, the physical computer. So if I hit download, it's gonna prepare, if you, can you see that down in the bottom right-hand corner where it says preparing download? Yes. Okay, so what it's gonna do is it's gonna zip the file, which means it's gonna compress all of these files and put them all in one folder. And then when I open that folder, I will extract the files. So basically what it's done is it's compressed it to make it faster and easier to download all at once and make it go fat quicker. And then if you can see down here where it says career search, and it has a little icon for a folder with a little zipper. Yeah. That means it's now a zipped file. So what I can do is I can go into this zipped file and say extract, or sorry, a zipped folder. And I can go in through my file explorer or through your finder. And you can say extract files. And then it'll extract those files and put each file individually on your computer. Okay. I, I I'd say it's also question. maybe a little simpler just to go from like each individual file, like if you're on your drive, for example, and just hold down control, click the files you'd like, right click and then hit download. So control does not actually, I hit the control key, it doesn't actually select all of them. What if you're on the main drive page instead of a folder? Yep, so if I'm here, control, 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 doesn't select all of them. So if I hit shift, doesn't select all of them. Hmm. I thought so, that you could do that. Um, I think there's probably a way to select more than one at a time. Uh, but the easiest way I know to do it is to create a folder and put them all in there and then download from the folder. Um, we can check and see. Let's put that in the follow-up email for a way to select more than one file. Yeah, um, it says to download. Itself. According to Google, it says to download multiple files, press command or control, and then click uh, any other files. That's strange why it's, it seems yeah, like it's, it's not working. It's, it's not selecting. Yeah, you can only see how it's only selecting the one. So we might have to investigate what if, that one a little bit more. What if you click on one, hold control, and then click another one? Nope. Nothing? Hmm. I'll have to investigate oh, no, that. Wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah, see if I've selected it, see how it highlights down below? Uh-huh. Okay, now it's Wonder. working. So now it's, yeah. And then if I right click and say, 
download zipping five files yeah okay so what you have to do is make sure that it's highlighted to make sure it's highlighted look for it to have that blue border around the title and do control so control like this and then right click and so you're holding on. down control while you're clicking on correct that right okay yep for all of them mm -hmm. okay well i yep. hope that I answered the question for whoever posed it yes. and i will also follow up <laughs> we'll with put that, that in, the, in the email yeah. that's a great question yeah we'll put it in there um i just have always done it as a folder because it go it seems to go faster but yeah if you have files that are not included in the folder and you just want to download individual files but more than one that control also lets you grab one here one here one here so you can grab from different areas so if you see now it says captions, photo album, budget, and lavender are all selected. That's one way you can grab them where you grab from multiple spots too, if that makes sense. And then you can hit download and it'll download them. Okay, it looks like that worked for them. So they say, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it used to work for me. That's why I was so confused as to why it wasn't working. That's all what of I was sudden. confused about too. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that so let, me, let me pursue that a little bit more. Um, and then you'll notice down here that when you do multiple files, it'll just say drive hyphen download rather than doing, so our folder was called career search. But if you see for the ones where it's multiple fold files and they're putting it into a zip folder, it'll say drive download because it doesn't know what the names are of because it's not in a folder okay hopefully that makes sense okay all right let's go ahead and play with permissions real quick so i'm going to go ahead and jump into my cpl test resume here and let's say i want someone else to help me collaborate and build my resume because let's say i'm i'm not i'm not entirely confident in what i should include and I want someone else to proof it and look it over and help me with it. So if I want to share this with someone else, I can give them different permissions. I can make them an editor, a commenter, or a viewer. If they're an editor, they can do anything they want to the document. They can change the text. Um, they can do whatever they want. They can comment on it. They can, they can view it. They can do everything. If they're a commenter, that means they can just make comments, which if you see over here where the little pop-up came up with a a little comment bubble with a little plus in it that's blue. If they want to comment or suggest an edit, they can do either one of those. If they are a viewer, it means they can just see it and that's it. Okay, so to show you how this works, I'm going to go ahead and share this sample resume with our Champagne Librarian account. And Rebecca's jumping into that and then she will show us what it looks like when the two of us are in there together. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say share. And I'm going to share to champagne librarian at gmail.com. Now, once I put in their email address, I have a chance to change their permissions. I'm hoping you can see the pop up. Is that correct, Rebecca? Uh, yes. Okay, so right now, I'm going to give them edit her editing privileges. That means she can change the text. She can basically do whatever I could do to the document. If I make her a commenter again, that means she can only comment on it. If I make a viewer, it means she can just see it. I can also send a message that says, hey, please help me with my resume. Thanks. And then she will get an email that tells her that I have shared a document with her. And all she has to do is click on that and it'll come with a link and she just clicks on the link and it'll take her right into this document. Okay. The notify people check mark here, if they don't have a Gmail account, you want to make sure you put this in there because that does send them the email. OK, so make sure you check mark the notify people. OK, now I'm going to say send. And then now you can see up at the top it says person added. And if I come over here to my share, it now says shared with one person. And then you can see me. I'm Champagne Library demo. And then Champagne Librarian is now an editor. OK, I'm going to say done. And now you'll see down here where it says Champagne Library. I'm hoping you see that. Yes. You see yourself in there, Rebecca. It's hard because I have my <laughs> As Champagne side Library. Side. It's just very yeah. small now. <laughs> yeah. So here she is. She is now the, um, at least on mine, you're showing up as uh, like pink text or um, with a pink uh, Champagne Library. And you can see the cursor where her cursor is shows up as pink. So while I'm up here doing whatever I'm doing, 
she can see me on her side with a different color, but I can see her as this pink cursor as she's changing stuff. So, you know, if I was up here to say like that, and then she can also make comments. So if she wanted to say, you know, don't forget to add this into your skills section or whatever, she can add a comment if she wants, um, and then she can change whatever she wants to change in here. You know, if you want to go ahead and say make make a comment like hey this is not actually your address <laughs> or whatever you want to put in there okay so you see does everyone see how it popped up and says double check this down here i'm hoping and I then see up it at, on my side okay and then up at the top if you if you can't see it pop into chat and let us know that you can't see this um but i'm hoping within the recording uh within the screen you can see that it now says champagne library said double check this and it's a new comment that popped up up at the top we should also see that it says open comment history and there's a little one up there which shows me that there's now a comment and i can reply and say i'm going to say oh thanks i'll fix this reply with that go over here and change it to what it should be And then I can take away the comment by hitting the check mark here. So if I come up here to the comment box again and I'm going to hit that check mark, it's going to mark as resolved and hide the discussion. So now can that you, I've done it, go ahead. Can you zoom in a little bit on that? Is yes. it possible for you to zoom in on that comment, little comment icon up there? Um, let me make a new comment so we can see the one pop up again. Okay, sure. Uh, let me make a new comment here. And then you can also see that it says the last edit was made seconds ago by Champagne Library. So whenever we open the version history, it'll also show me whatever their edits are that they have made too. So we'll let Rebecca go ahead and make her comment here. And then when she's done, if you watch the top right corner up here, just to the left of the share button and the left of the present button is the comment history. And you should see a one there. I see it that, on my side. And that means that there's an there's one new comment from someone. So if you're the owner of the document, you can click on that and then see their suggestion or edit or their comment. So in this case, she's saying, don't forget your start date. Are you all seeing that? I see it. OK, perfect. So then I can reply and say, thanks and hit the reply. And then I can change it and say, you know, 2022 and say, let's see, we're in April. So, and I could put that there. And then I can go back and check mark the little box here that says that it's resolved and hide the discussion. Okay. Doesn't mean the discussion has gone away. It's still there. You can still recall it and pull it up if you need to. Um, but it's just saying what, what the edits and tracking all the changes that you've made. OK, so this is also how you can collaborate with another person. So if you're working together on a paper or a report or anything like that, you can share it with them and then you can all work on it together. Yes, and you can also add text in if you've allowed the other person to have editing um, permissions. I have had classes before where I've worked in groups, say of like four or five people, and we go ahead and we create a document and we all jump in and we can add stuff in there we can edit stuff we can change things around because google lets you have that capability if you give those permissions yeah so instead of having to you work on your section and then you save it and then you email that document to the other people in your group and then they have to open it up and they have to work on their sections and they have to save it and then send it on to the next person instead you can all jump in there at once um, and it works really well for editing like transitions between, you know, if you have different topics, different parts of the paper, um, you can work on the transitions together. It also means you can check each other's work uh, more easily. Um, so it's a really nice thing, I think. Yeah, I think it's really, things really efficient. Useful. Yeah, definitely. Makes things a little and, bit more efficient. Yeah, and you don't have to, like you said, you don't have to go and do the like sending documents, getting them, then saving them somewhere and making sure you have the right version. Exactly. 
because then you wonder, oh, is it final, you know, final two, final five, final six? <laughs> right. <laughs> Which I definitely experienced in the past before <laughs> something like this was an option. Now, Microsoft also has this as an option with their, their version of Word Online and their version of PowerPoint Online and their version of um, Excel Online too. So this isn't unique to uh, the Google products. Um, but I did want to make sure I mentioned that it is something you can do uh, with the Google products. So, and you also see up here at the top that it now says, you know, um, champagne librarian and then um, me. Now, if I want to revoke privileges, I can also do that. So, for example, if let's say you were, um, you wanted to share pictures with someone. And then you're like, all right, now they're just taking up space. I need to get them off my computer. So I'm going to I'm going to take away the privileges and delete them. You can do that, too. So up here where I have my share, I can click on it and I can say, OK, right now they're an editor. And then I can say, you know, viewer, commenter, or I can remove them. OK, once I remove them, then they can't do anything or make any more changes to the document once I've saved it. So now. Rebecca has been removed. It'll tell me person's been removed. And when I hit share, it's going to say private only to me because I've revoked her privileges. Yeah. And you can Once also go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. I was going to say you can also do that where you set a time limit. So if your project is due on a certain date, you can say, all right, you have access to this until a certain date. Um, you know, if it's this resume, I got to submit this two weeks from today. I'm like, I'm only giving you access till two weeks from today. So you can also set a date when you want it to expire. Okay, go ahead, Rebecca, whatever you're gonna say. Sure, so what I was gonna say is once you remove them, they can no longer see that document anymore either. So, you know, when you did that thing where you share and you allow permissions, there is an option to be a viewer or a commenter. So they may still be able to see it if you select them as a viewer. But of course, if you remove them, then they can no longer do any of those things. So they can't see the document, comment, or edit it. Correct. And so, and it's up to you, um, you know, if you want to give them a certain amount of time or, or do whatever. You can also, what you see down here at the bottom where it says get link, get link allows you to send a link in email or face, wherever you want to share this link. And then anyone who clicks on that link gets that kind of access to it. So be careful when you use the the get link uh, because you can uh, inadvertently share it with a lot more people than you intended <laughs> to. So just be careful if you copy the link and then share it via email or if you share it on social if you shared that link on social media, anyone who follows you on social media could go in and look at it. So just keep that in mind too when you're making these. okay? All right, questions about sharing, permissions and collaborations? I don't see any. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing that and we'll jump into the PowerPoint again. So give me one moment. And then we're gonna go ahead and from current slide, hopefully, yeah. I think that's the first time that's worked where it actually went from current slide. <laughs> that I've seen. So anyway, if I'm, I'm just gonna walk you through the handout real quick to show you what everything we covered today. It's all in that handout, um, how to create a new document, rename it, um, what the menu toolbar looks like, how to copy and paste using those shortcuts, adding to the uh, personal dictionary, using the spreadsheets. And then at the bottom here, I've got, let me jump through slides here real quick. Sorry, this is probably going pretty fast. And then downloading and the permissions, and it's all spelled out here for what kind of permission you're giving someone and um, how they it looks when it collaborates. So here's like what we saw with um, when Rebecca entered at Champagne Librarian where she was a different color and each person is assigned a different color. So if you're collaborating with say 10 people, each of those 10 people will have a different color for their cursor when you're working on the document together, okay? Um, Google can also do a suggestion mode where users can make suggestions for the document without actually changing the text. Um, so for example, um, with my spouse, I sometimes, he'll 
ask me to edit something and I'll go in and edit something for him. But instead of actually editing it and changing it into my wording or my vocabulary, I will just make some suggestions. Okay, and then a couple of additional resources. We have the GCF Learn Free tutorials. There's also Google support and Google has tutorials and videos as well on their site that you can look at. Um, of course, we also have LinkedIn and Gale courses where you can take courses. Um, there are some courses through or some videos through LinkedIn um, on Google Docs and Sheets and slides that you could take if you were interested. Uh, I put in the rest of April's workshops. We are going back to in-person starting next week. So on the 12th, we have getting to know iPhones and iPads that will be in person here at the library. Rebecca will be teaching that workshop for us. It'll be in uh, room 215, which is the Friends Conference Room up on the second floor. Um, if you'd like, you can join our wait list. And what we usually do is we call everyone a day or two ahead of time, confirm that they're going to attend. And usually, even if you're on the wait list, we do usually have some no-shows. So I do encourage you to come, even if you're on the wait list. Um, we'll do what we can to get you in the room. And um, we also, if it's a situation where um, you would like to do a book a librarian or check out our YouTube channel for previous videos, we can also suggest those um, if you're not comfortable with uh, being in person yet. Okay, then we have Android phones and tablets that next week. And then one of my favorites to teach, and I think possibly one of Rebecca's favorite ones to teach is on the 26th, which is our taking pictures with a smartphone or tablet. Um, we have very cooperative models that we bring in, um, most of my stuffed animal collection. Uh, <laughs> and then we work with them to take pictures and try our different modes um, that we have on our cameras with our, our camera phones. Okay, and then I did wanna mention um, May specifically, I know it's a little bit further out, but because that is going to be our deep dives into Google Docs, Sheets and Slides. And then at the end of May, on the 24th, we will have another virtual workshop, another webinar like we are doing today, which will be um, Google Calendar and their Google's meeting room software called Google Meet. OK, um, so we're switching from virtual at the beginning of the month to one virtual workshop at the end of the month. And that's what we'll do throughout the summer. So if you uh, are more comfortable with the virtual environment, you are more than welcome to come to those virtual classes at the end of the month as well. And then uh, we do have a specialty tech that's for anyone, um, which is travel with virtual reality. We have um, our virtual reality goggles, and we're going to be talking about space and astronomy with um, Eric Johnson, who is the director of the Starkle Planetarium. He's going to be taking us to Mars with the Mars rover, and we're going to be talking about the Aurora Borealis and um, some other cool space related stuff all through our virtual goggles. And that's on Monday the 11th. Uh, at 6.30. There's still some space left in that one. Uh, like I mentioned, the Booga Librarian, feel free to set up and schedule a consultation with one of our experts. You can go to champagne.org slash Booga Librarian, and you can always reach out to us via live chat or email, uh, and you can always watch our webinars on YouTube. If you go to champagne.org slash YouTube, you can see our tech workshop playlist and uh, find all of the previous uh, workshops that we've done. All right, and then we also have a monthly message that we send out with the upcoming workshops for the next month. So if you want the chance to sign up for something uh, early on uh, before the general public, uh, if you sign up for our tech workshop uh, monthly message, you will get that email uh, before the newsletter, the library wide newsletter goes out. Um, so please think about signing up for that. You can do that on the tech workshops page. Okay, and then here's my information. Um, you can reach me at swinkler at champagne.org. Um, if you wanna call, feel free to call, um, or you can also call the general library number, which is 403-2000, um, and then also get a hold of us that way. All right. Okay. And that's everything that I had today. Um, if anybody would like me to demo something again, or, uh, would like to ask questions, again, feel free. And we'll put those extra ones in the uh, follow-up email too. Yes. If you have any additional questions, please put those in chat now and we can hopefully help answer them. Yes. Or raise your hand if you'd like to do that instead.
Yes. Or if you have any questions that you, yeah, that you would like um, to ask verbally, please feel free, let us know. And again, our deep dive will go over what most of those icons are that you see in those toolbars um, if you want to attend the workshops in May. Well, I don't see any questions. Oh, someone is saying, can you set up a photo directory and share it with somebody? Oh, yes. Thank you. That was the one that we, if we had enough time, we could do. Yes. So let me share my screen again, and we will uh, demo that for you real quick. So let me jump into... Uh, which one is my Google here? Okay, so I'm going to jump out of this particular slide, but hopefully you're seeing my Google Drive screen. Yes. Okay, so from Google, you can either, there's two ways you can do it. You can either do it from Google Drive and make a folder with your photos in it, or you can go through the Photos app. So if you were going to do it from Google Drive, you might do something like, here we have the example of July 20th pictures. And if I open that, you see there's two adorable puppy pictures. Oh. Um, and these are these are coming probably from uh, Pixabay, which is a free photo site um, where they give permission for educational purposes like today. And if I wanted to share this, I could go ahead and from my drive, go to the 20th here and take this folder here. And then up here at the top where you see there's get link, there's share July 20th pictures or delete and remove it and then the more actions. So all I have to do is hit share July 20th pictures. This works just like if I was sharing one file with someone, but I'm going to use this little person with a plus sign. And then I would share it with Champagne Library. And again, I would make them editor, commenter, or viewer. If you want them just to be able to view the pictures, you can do that. But if you want them to be able to download the picture, you do want to give them editing privileges and then hit send. And then that folder has been shared with them. OK. Then if you go to this here, you can see there. Um, I'm hoping you can see now that there's a little there's a little person icon on mm -hmm. the folder icon there. That means that you've shared it with someone. OK, now, if I wanted to do it through photos, these four, sorry, the nine little dots up here in the nine app, app dots, if I click on that and I go to photos. This is a separate application for photos, and we have some saved here that are um, 360 images that we took of the library for a specific tour. And if I want to share them over here on the left hand side, can you see how it says albums and yes. 360 champagne? So this is actually an album for 360 Champagne Tour. And here is where I could share this whole album with someone. And up here, if you see this little, um, it looks like a three-pointed like a three -pointed triangle, but it doesn't have the other connecting end to it. This is like, I'm connecting. It's sort of like person. a family tree, like a, a person yes. and then things come off of it. Yeah, so I'm connecting, like if it's me, I'm connecting to this person and this person. I think of it that way. Yeah, like a little connection tree. Yes. Um, and I can hit share. And then I could go ahead and invite someone to this album. And again, if I'm going to do champagne library, because they have a Gmail account, I can find them here. And I think I actually already shared this with the champagne library account. That's why it's grayed out. Um, so if I wanted to share it with, for example, champagne library demo or champagne library VR, perhaps, which is another one of our accounts at gmail.com. I could do that. Um, I think it's public library, actually. Hold on one second. There we go. I can hit that, and then I can share it with them. Now, if they don't have a Google account, you can still share it with them. You just have to type in their email address. So it doesn't have to be a Google account. It can be any account. And then you're just inviting them to the album, and then they can view it, um, and they can download the images. So then I would just hit send and that will invite them to the album. Then down here on the left-hand side, you can now see me and uh, Champagne Public Library VR, which is our VR uh, account, and then our Champagne Library account, okay? And then everybody that has access to it, they can also come up here and download. So those three little dots here allow them to download everything in the album. So they could download all the pictures at once if they wanted, or they can go to each picture and download them. Okay, 
So I'm hoping that's what you were looking for. Um, we can include able, that in the follow-up email as well. Yeah, with being able to, so there's two different ways you can do it um, based on if you're using the Photos app or the Google Drive app. There is another question. Um, yes. Someone is asking, is there a business spreadsheet for budgeting available? Is there an invoice draft? How much space do I have in Google for my docs? Yes. So with your free account with Google, you get 15 gigabytes and you can tell where you are in your storage here off on the left hand side where it says storage. And right now we're using 1.5 gigabytes of our 15 gigabytes in our free demo account um, to find out if there's a template that will work for you. Uh, I would suggest going to new down to sheets and check the templates. And you can also you can browse through them here. Um, for example, I can also do what I like to do is control F, which is a shortcut, a keyboard shortcut, control plus the F key. Um, since you mentioned invoice, and I'm going to just go ahead and type the word invoice in there and then see what we get. So here's an invoice sample. And then you could temp, you could customize it for, for your, your business. Um, what I do recommend doing is once you've customized it for your business, uh, you may want to go ahead and download it. Um, and then use it on your the local machine or your your personal computer or your work computer um, rather than having it stored up in the cloud um, if it includes financial information for your customers. Um, and that is that is, of course, your choice. You can do anything you want there. Um, for me, I personally don't share things or put things up in the cloud that then have personal or financial information. Um, so Again, that's up to you, um, but you could certainly create it there and do it and then download it um, and then, you know, come in and put it back to, to the nondescript stuff too. But yeah, so it looks like it does have an invoice template. Uh, what was the other one? It was an invoice budget. and then budget. Yes. So I think we do have um, sheets. And you could do budget. So there's an annual budget, monthly budget, um, finance investments, calendars. There's even a wedding planner. <laughs> I think there um, are also templates you can download from online as well. Sometimes people have created and shared templates that may be something yes. that you can find online. Yeah, I recommend checking out the work section. Um, if Because here, right here is an annual business, business. That was great. That was me trying to combine the word business and budget at the same time, and it came out as business. Blah, blah. Um, <laughs> annual business budget um, by QuickBooks, Intuit QuickBooks, that's being shared through Google. Um, so you could open this here. Um, I do recommend if you if you go out, like Rebecca's suggesting, and you find one online, um, vet the source first, just to make sure, because of course you are downloading something from the internet, um, and you do open yourselves up uh, yourself up a little bit if you're doing that. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, you know, for example, we've heard of QuickBooks, or at least I've heard of QuickBooks, and I know that they do, um, you know, budget software. So I'm a little bit less likely to be concerned about pulling this one that's already in the Google templates um, than one from somewhere else online. But if there's a trusted source out there online for you, by all means, um, use what works for you. Okay, hopefully that, hopefully that works there. I believe course, so, that's only questions that I had. Yeah, so, and if you notice down here at the bottom where it says set up, that's the first tab down here, income, expenses, summary. This is where you would mostly be entering your, your financial data into um, and letting it do the formulas and functions to tally everything up. So the first work, the first sheet in this workbook is basically just telling you how to start and then actually entering stuff would be income and expenses and the summary section. Okay. I think you hit it on the head because they said thank you. All right, perfect. Yeah, and again, that's also true. Um, a lot of uh, businesses are using Google and Google products through with Google Workspace um, for uh, the actual businesses too uh, and there are, you know, if you're using a paid version of Google through 
work or for your business, um, they do have some extra layers of security built in um, and some extra features as well. We're not really covering that today, um, but if you're on the business side of things, that is something to consider and to check out their paid versions of Google Workplace and Workspace, excuse me. I'm gonna go ahead and log out of here. Oh, I'll go ahead and stop sharing too. So, okay. Any other questions? Oh, sorry, I, I was muted. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that was all the questions that I saw. And of course, okay. um, if you guys want to reach out to ask further questions, feel mm -hmm. free. We're always available that way yeah. via email um, or phone. And I will just put in a quick plug too that if uh, if you have a small business or any size business um, and you haven't spoken with Madeline, who's our business librarian or attended any of the uh, business workshops, that's another avenue for uh, learning um, some pretty cool stuff. She has outside speakers that come in and talk um, and do programming as well. Okay, I think All that's right. about it. I guess we'll say thank you everybody for attending today. We really uh, enjoy holding these and we hope to see you all in uh, in person coming up. We're excited to get back to seeing everybody's faces again. Yes, yes we are. And then of course we also, if you're not quite ready to come back, we do have again those options to still do some virtual workshops too. Yes, so. and of course we still have all the YouTube videos will not be going anywhere. So you can always access those on our YouTube channel. Excellent, all right. Okay, thank you everybody. Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>